Good morning, Abundant Life Church of God. How are you guys doing today, family? Uh, we're going to open up with worship. Uh, so let's pray. Personally, Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for this day, for this time of fellowship, for this time to come together. We to exalt your name on high. I just pray that our hearts and our minds are just geared towards you today, O oh Lord, and just allow us to sing your praise. Praise your in your perfect holy name. Amen. 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 Thank you. <coughs> Praise you, Lord. Glory to you, God. Oh, I want to see him. It's our first song.
think I'm whipped up today. I think I got to probably reel it in just a little bit before I start running around this stage. Get a workout today. Hallelujah. God is good. All the time. Absolutely. Call and response, right? That's that song right there, you know. It, that song, it's, it's like a call and response. He's calling it and God responds to it. That's the way our life should be. It should be a call and a response. God, you call it to God and God responds it back to you. It's, it's an amazing thing. Like I said, you are, you are an engineer. Put that on your resume. You know, you are an instrument of God. Hallelujah. All right, I'm going to first open up with Ephesians 4, 2. With all loneliness and gentleness, with long-suffering, bearing one another in love, enduring... Oh, I'll just keep it right there. That's as far as I wanted to go. With all humility and gentleness, with patience, showing tolerance for one another in love. We're going to talk about patience in love. Personally, Father, we thank you, dear Lord. We thank you for this time of worship, this time to sit there in fellowship, to, uh, to sing your praises. We thank you for the worship team coming forth and singing your praises and allowing us to usher in uh, this time. I pray as the word comes forth that you hide me behind the cross, Lord God, and that you just sit there and use me. Use me in the way you want me to be used, Lord. And I pray right now that people have the ears to hear it, the minds to understand it, and the hearts to receive it and hold on to it. I pray every single word that comes out of my mouth just be used by you and from you. And every single word that told me, just cast it aside and allow it not to be said. Allow it to be cast to the side in people's minds if something sneaks through. Because I am just a man, but you are a God that can be used in me. And I am allowing you to use me today. We all pray this in your precious holy name. Amen. Amen. I had to pick that up really quickly. That was bothering me. All right. So, God instructs us to have several kinds of patience. And all the kinds of patience are important, right? We are to have the kind of patience that is necessary to wait for unexpected or expected things. Have you ever guys sat there and had a ketchup bottle? You're sitting there, you're holding it over the fries for about like two minutes, waiting for that little drop to come out. Patience. Just give you a little heads up too. There's a 57 on the side. You hit that 57, it'll pour out. Just give you a little tidbit. Yeah. Sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes. But but you ever sit there and you have to sit there and um, go to somebody's birthday party or you're having a birthday party and you're having a birthday, you're waiting all year because you're waiting for that expected thing. You're waiting for that weird thing to come in the mail. I don't care how old you are or how young you are. When it's your birthday, it's like the end of the world stops, and it's all about you, and you're waiting, you're going to that mail every five seconds, even though the mailman's there, you're waiting for that birth, birthday card, right? All right, so another important kind of patience we need to have is to do with circumstances or trials. The word is sometimes translated as patience, but more often it's translated as perseverance or endurance. When you're going through a trial, when you're going through a, a struggle in your walk, when, you, when it seems like the enemy is coming at you at every angle, sometimes you just got to wait. And it, I'm telling you, waiting is the hardest thing, but it makes you persevere, it makes you stronger. Because at the end of the tunnel, there is light. Because that storm, that trial that you're going through, is only for a season. It's not, it's not going to be there forever. God promised you that he's not going to do that. And it's just going to, honestly, it's going to strengthen you. I know the stuff that I went through in my past um, from just ministerial stuff. Um, 
some of the stuff that I went through actually made me stronger and made me more knowledgeable. Um, I had to sit there and endure some of the pain, but it's still it's not there no more. It's gone. So another important kind of patience is the patient that requires to wait upon the Lord. God's table is much different from ours. We want our praise answered now, but God knows the right time. We talked about this before, that when God tells you that he's going to do something, it's not in our time. It's not in our measurement. Um, it's whenever God says that it's going to come to pass. So we have to be patient and wait for that promise to come. I think patience is probably one of the hardest things to do. Being patient. Waiting. Since this sermon is about love and how to live love, live a life of love, the patience I want to explore today is a patience that has to do with people. Ouch. Right? Sometimes people, people rub us the wrong way, right? Sometimes things don't go the right way we want it. Has anybody ever been a, a manager or any supervisor or something like that when you ask your employee or employer or whatever to do something and they give you a hard time about it? It's called being patient with love. You just kind of got to love them no matter what because it is so easy to get upset and angry. But the question is, what are you getting upset and angry about? The question being is, is not, you know, the thing you asked. But sometimes you've got to be patient with people. Even though they rub you the wrong way. Iron sharpens iron, right? People rub you the wrong way. If God loved you, I think you can love them, right? I think I think uh, throughout our, our time that we've been here, the one person that showed us the most love, the most grace, the most mercy is God. And he's been the most patient with us. He's been sitting there watching us do our own thing for so many years, so many times, sitting there just being like, why? Why do you have to do that? I have given you an out. I have, I have paved a way for you to make it so easy. But I love you. I love you so much that I'm going to die on that cross for you. For everything that you did. And I'm going to be patient with you. I think that should be a, a, a model that we should live our life after. Even, not even as just Christians, but as a human being. That... We should look at the author and the creator of our lives and say, geez, I'm not perfect. I never claimed to be perfect. But God sat there and said, I love you so much that I'm going to wait for you. I'm going to be patient. I know with having Ellie, patience is a virtue. Yesterday was something else. When, she's, when a baby's teething, you got to show that child love. I, if anybody, anybody has a kids, you know when they're babies and they're teething, you have to be patient with them because they can't express what they're feeling. They can't express how they're feeling. They can't do any of that. You just got to love them. No matter what, you have to show love. Now, the Greek word um, is a compound word. It's a macro thumos, which is long and wrath. Okay, just to give you a little nugget. The King James Version comes the closest to literal translation with the term suffereth long or long suffering. Long suffering. How many people have somebody in their life that is just one of those thorns in your side? Long suffering. No matter what, you go in every day to work. You go in every day to your place where you are employed or you go home and somebody rubs you the wrong way. And I know I've probably done this to see her numerous times past 13 years being married to her. She's been very patient with me. 
she's been long suffering with me to the point where I'll just give you a little tidbit men don't leave your uh, cabinet doors opened up don't do it <laughs> they don't like it you pick up your clothes after you get done with them too <laughs> long suffering right but that's patience it's the patience with love that through, through their numbness through their thickness thick headedness you still got to love them because God has called you to love somebody God has not called you to sit there and hold up a grudge God has not called you to sit there and hold something against somebody he has called you to forgive them the book of Matthew, I want to say it is, is uh, how many times are you supposed to forgive somebody? Seven times? Seven times 70, right? Or until... Seven times seven days. Yep, or until otherwise. Until otherwise given. You know what I'm saying? So that means you don't sit there and you just say, well, I forgave you once. I'm not going to do it again. That means that, hey, the cabinet door... Hey, babe, I'm sorry I left the cabinet door open up. You forgive me? Yes, I do. The next day I leave it open, she's not going to forgive me. That means she's going to forgive me again and again. I know it's a really, really kind of weird way of looking at it. It's kind of foolish. But you got to think about it. The cabinet doors that are left open time and time again are our lives that are left open time and time again. That we have to sit there and we have to forgive that person no matter what. That person that sat there and did wrong to us, you got to forgive them for that. You got to sit there and let it go because if you if you harbor on to something, if you're holding on to unforgiveness, that's going to hinder something. That's going to hinder your walk with God. And I'm not telling you you have to go up to that person and meet them for coffee. Sometimes that's hard to go and meet somebody that you have that has done you wrong. But you got to sit there and forgive them for what they have done, number one. You have to forgive them for what they have done to you or how they have hurt you. Forgiveness is, is, is part of patience because you got to love them. Because I'm telling you one thing, I, I've been hurt numerous upon numerous upon numerous times by people I looked up to. People I, people I kind of like quote unquote idolized said I want to be like them when I grow up or now that I'm older I want to be like them when I am mature in my faith with Christ. Can I tell you something? Christians hurt Christians more than anybody else. That's the sad part is we Christians are, are, are so easy to offend other Christians easier than the secular world is to offend a Christian. Because we put each other upon a, a pedestal, a bar stool, or whatever you are, podium, or whatever you want to call it, so high that we can't measure up. We can't do that. There's only one person that is, that is on that pedestal that is up that high, and that's God. We can't sit there and be on that level. We have to sit there and, and look at them as a fellow person like us. Because last time I, I, I thought about it, unless you guys are different, we all put our clothes on the same way. One foot at a time. Right? I tried to jump in my pants one time. That didn't work out too good. I was trying to be different from everybody else. And I'm telling you one thing, don't try to do that. You'll, you're going to end up hurt. But we need to have patience with other Christians because I'm telling you one thing, we're all going to fail. We're all going to make mistakes. We're all, you know what, honestly, we're not going to do the things you want us to do all the time. Because we're not all the same. We're different. Each one of us is different. So your outlook, your opinion, your way of thinking is different from somebody else's. I know I'm, I pick on Sierra all the time. But her outlook on the way things are 
is different from mine. That cabinet door that she sees, to her, that's the, that's the, that's the breaking point. That's the milestone. That's the, that's the end all type deal. You know what I'm saying? To me, it's just another cabinet door. That means it's easier for me to get to the bowl of cereal that I want. But her, it's different. And that's why she's patient with me. That's why she's long suffering for over 13 years, and I hope it's another 45, 30, you know, 50 something years if she allows it. Keyword is if she allows it. <laughs> no, just kidding. About 45 years, I hope you end up closing the cabinet door. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, I've been better. So let's look at a couple of verses. First Corinthians 13, 4 through 5. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrong. Right there. Love is patient. I, I think that right there, I honestly, I have a little bit more to say. I have stuff to do. But if, if, if our words, if our lifestyle, if the way we can sit there and have just one scripture in our head at all times when we see somebody that is rubbing us the wrong way, if we could sit there and have one thing that is etched in our minds, in our hearts, to sit there and read out 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 5, love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It, it is not proud. It does not sit there and say, I am better than you because I can shut the cabinet doors and you can't. It does not sit there and boast and say that I am better than you because I have been in ministry for longer. It does not boast or, or sit there and say that they are prouder than you because something else is in your life. They don't sit there and do that. Love is, love is one of those things that sits there and says, you know what? That cabinet door is your, is your Achilles heel, so I'm going to shut it for you. It does not sit there and say that I'm better than you because I can shut it. It just says that I love you because I can shut it. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. If somebody upsets you, if somebody does something wrong to you, if somebody says something to you, instead of being angered about it, speak about it. If somebody rubs you the wrong way, the best thing to do is sit there and get it out of your system and go up to that person and say, hey, what was just said kind of hurt me the wrong way. It just rubbed me the wrong way. What was said or how it was done, you, you kind of just really offended me. And I'm telling you one thing. If you get it out into the air, if you get it out into the atmosphere, you're going to feel a lot less pain and a lot less burden in your life. You're not going to sit there and hold on to it. Because it says it keeps no records of wrong. If somebody offends you, speak about it. Hash it out right there on the spot instead of holding on to it, instead of holding that grudge. Speak about it. And honestly, I can guarantee you, I can almost guarantee you that whatever was said, number one, was probably taken out of context. Or two, it wasn't said properly. So somebody needs clarification on how to do it. Because like I said earlier, our minds are not the same. We're not wired the same. So when I say something, when they say something, when whomever said something, whatever the case may be, when they say it, if you don't understand the way it was put into, into the context, then you should probably ask them. And I want to let you know that many years, this face right here, this is how I look almost 24-7. I hardly ever smile. And that's a personal thing. Okay? My jokes sometimes are dry. Okay? But you know how many people have sat there and I, I'm sitting there joking around with them or saying something and it's like, well, he was serious. No, it, it, this, is, this, is, this is my face. Sierra yells at me all the time. Well, you got to smile more so that people understand that you're joking around. I'm like, I can't smile. And that's a personal 
belief, I'll tell you later on about that. But this, this, is, this is me. This is me angry, this is me happy, this is me sad, this is, this, is, this is who I am. I would love to be behind a mask so I could pretend like I'm smiling all the time, my eyes just being like up a little bit, so it's like, oh, he is smiling. But if, if I, I sat there before and people judged me, judged my, by the way I look, by the way I act, until they realize the real me. Because I'm not like them. You guys are not like me. So don't get angry. First Thessalonians, Thessalonians wow, that's a tongue full and a half. I love that word. Thessalonians 5.14. I just said it. And we urge you, brothers and sisters, warn those who are, in, are idle and disruptive. Encourage the disarm. Help the weak. Be patient with everyone. Help the weak. That's not saying somebody that, that is below your stature. You got a 400 pound man that can lift 10,000 pounds. That doesn't mean that he is better than everybody else. That, that, help those who are weak. Somebody that's down in the dumps, somebody that is, that's sitting there having a bad day, somebody that, that woke up on the wrong side of the bed, help them out. Instead of, instead of sitting there pointing fingers and yelling at them and saying, well, geez, you're in a bad mood. Why don't you go back to bed? Do you, do you think that's, that's the answer? Because I'm telling you one thing. If you sat there, and I know that if you tell somebody, well, why don't you just go back to bed, probably the next thing that's going to come up to you is a backhand or some words that don't want to be said. And then next thing you know, things escalate. And when it starts here, then the voices get raised up. You, know, you understand how high those, those voices can get? Be patient with everybody. Somebody wakes up on the wrong side of the bed, they, they're angry. What can you do to fix it? How can you sit there and help them out to fix their bad day? If somebody just got a bad rapport with some, something, taxes, whatever, help them out. Live with them. Be with them. Walk in their shoes. Because until you walk in their shoes, you don't know what's going on. Galatians 5.22 But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, self-control. Sierra loves this song. Love and patience. Do we understand that, guys? Love and patience are the, are the two things that go hand in hand. John 3, 16, I didn't put this in there because we all know it's all etched in our minds. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life, right? God loved you so much that he gave, he gave his only begotten son. We need to sit there and have that same type of love that we're willing to give our quote-unquote prized possession. Because that's what Jesus was. He was like a prized possession. He was God's only son. And he gave it. He gave it up. He freely gave it up for us. For the ones, honestly, that half the time don't even deserve it. But he still died on that cross for you. He still gave it up for you. He went through the beatings and the, the ridicules and the mocks and the spitting and the disgrace and everything like that. All the way up to the cross. Why? Because he loved. And because he was patient with them. He was patient with his 12 disciples. Was he not? He sat there and he wasn't even at the table knowing that somebody was going to betray him. And he still loved them. He was still patient with them. 
He sat there and listened to his disciples sit there and question what's going on. Right to his face, question what's going on. Jesus said, get behind me, Satan. Right? I'm not saying that he was, he, was, he was led by Satan, but his words were foolish. Right? He sat there. He was still patient with them. He still loved them. He still gave up everything for them and for you. That's the lifestyle that we need to live and lead, honestly, is to sit there and be patient with one another. I said it before, if somebody is not doing something your way, be patient with them. Unless you want to take it over and do it for them. Sometimes and that, that's not always the answer because doing something for somebody else is a good thing, but when you want to sit there and you want to help them along, you want to sit there and do something with them, why don't you take them by the hand and walk with them through it. These, these new Christians that come in through the doors, you know what? They're not going to look like us. They're not going to talk like this. They're not going to sound like us. They're not going to be like us. But that should not stop that door from being opened. Because last time I realized and thought, whomever, when you first came through that door, you were not perfect. Every time you come through that door, you're still not perfect. Anytime that door is opened up, honestly, the one thing I want to let you know that this is, this is not a church. This is a hospital. This is a hospital for those that are sick. That is very true, because I'm telling you one thing, anytime that you are in a, well, let's just talk about Walmart. Anytime that you are in Walmart, guess what? People know where you go. People know how you act. And people, honestly, they're waiting for you to sit there and say, in aisle three, you're talking to your, your significant other the way you shouldn't be talking, raising cane, doing all this stuff, and the person in aisle four knows where you go. What type of an example are you being? Because you're not being a good example. And honestly, you're going to sit there and you're going to probably cause somebody not to come to church. If, somebody, if one of your family members or your friends sit there and ha see you having conflict with your other fellow believer, do you really think that's going to cause them to come to church? It's not. If anything, you're going to push them away because they're going to say, I don't want to be like that. Why would I want to have that hatred? Why would I want to sit there and have somebody pick on me or make me upset or say something that's, that, that does, does not belong? Instead of sitting there tearing somebody down, you build them up. Instead of sitting there saying, well, that guy is a fool because of this. Instead of saying, I'm going to help that person out. I'm telling you one thing. When I, when I became saved, did I automatically learn how to be, quote unquote, Bible reading, Christian, all that stuff, and know this book to and from? No. I was still sinning. I was still doing things that were not of God. But it was a daily, daily walk that I had to do. And I'm telling you one thing. If somebody sat there and said that, and I'm going to just say this one, it's not true, okay, because I've been alcohol-free for over 14 years. But I'm just going to use this one on myself as an example. If I just got saved from, from you know, went to church, you know, I was still drinking. And if somebody came up to me and yelled at me and said, you have to stop drinking because that's, an, that's against God's moral, 
and then started ridiculing me and all this other stuff and yelling at me about it, I can guarantee you I probably would have never gone back to church. Instead of sitting there saying, hey, let's read the Bible, let's talk about this. Let's expose as a family what it is. Instead of sitting there saying, well, this is what the Bible says, so this is what God wants for you. This is where God wants you to be. You have to sit there and, and tell somebody something out of love. Because any time you sit there and you use your own voice, your own, your own motto, you're pushing people away, dude. You're pushing people so far away from God that it's not even funny. And you know the only person that can stop you from doing whatever you're doing is God. It's called conviction from the Holy Spirit. And once the conviction from the Holy Spirit sets down on that person, that's when they're going to change. That's when they're going to sit there and say, huh, you're right. James 1, 19 and 20. My dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to be angry. Because human anger does not produce the righteous that God desires. When was the last time you actually just quote unquote shut up and listened? Instead of sitting there trying to rebuttal or trying to prove or trying to say something else, why don't you just listen? And once you listen, instead of just coming back with something that can go like that, be slow to speak about it. Slow to sit there and speak. So in other words, you're sitting there you're asking God, what do I say and how do I re respond to this question? One of the hardest things that I had to deal with, and honestly, it sometimes it could be a thing that comes back, is slow to become angry. I'll be honest with you, I, I don't get the anger that I had when I was younger. I was a very angry, angry person. You gotta learn how to be slow to be angry, slow to sit there and become that person that you don't wanna be. You don't want to just sit there and, and fuel up and then be in an argument with something and then lash out because escalation occurs and that's when people get hurt. That's when you don't show the love of Christ to somebody else. You've got to be patient with people even if it takes years Because God is still patient with you. After everything that is being said, everything that is being done, even behind the Wizard of Oz closed curtain thing that you think you have going on, God still sees it. God still hears it. God still understands it because he knows your heart more than you know your heart. He knows your mind more than anybody else knows your mind. And he's still patient with you. And he's still willing to give you everything to have a better life. I think with that being said, I'm going to close with the E family. Personally, Father, we thank you, dear Lord. We thank you for this word. We thank you for this time, this time to come together, this time to, uh, to hear from you. I just pray that today, that today is a day that we can start being patient with one another. Start showing the love of Christ to one another. Start, you know, start, start just being different. If there's an, a disagreement with somebody, I just pray that they can come out and allow it to be in a loving manner. Allow nothing to come out of the lips that are, that are harsh or, or abrasive, but make sure it comes out of the mouth as love. 
and to receive it as love as well. I just pray this all in your precious holy name. Amen.